Uh, thanks for coming to the briefing today. We are, it's Monday, September 17th, and you're now getting a chance to experience a conference room that I think is uh, maybe what people expect to see when they walk into the council building. It's nice that you can be seated at a nice table and uh, chairs that aren't really old and cruddy. So welcome to the new council facilities. I hope you all appreciate them as we, I don't think we're gonna stay in this room, unfortunately, in the future, but uh, I will start today with uh, brief comments on the legislation, the zoning text amendment that's gonna be before the council tomorrow. Uh, we will discuss, we're not going to be voting tomorrow, but uh, we will be discussing the farm alcohol production standards, which is about wineries and breweries and distilleries and cideries in our farmland communities, our agricultural reserve. And uh, we've been working on this issue extensively for the uh, number of months, and the Fed Committee took it up, and we have a Fed Committee recommendation before the uh, council. Uh, personally, I'm very excited about this. I really appreciate the co-sponsorship of Councilmember Craig Rice, who's a lead co-sponsor, and a number of other council members have signed on as co-sponsors as well. And the intent is to bring the production of wine and, and beer and cider and spirits back to Montgomery County's farmland communities. It is an historic use of farming, but it had really fell out of, uh, it fell out of favor in the market environment, in the producer environment, and um, you know, Montgomery County actually has soil and climate that is really suitable for making wine, for growing grapes. And uh, of course, if you drive through the Ag Reserve, you'll see roads like Price Distillery Road. You know, there, it's because there was a distillery there. Uh, but the whole alcohol industry changed and the way that big companies took advantage of laws and wrote laws to advantage themselves against small producers is one of the real legacies of the prohibition uh, repeal. And uh, we've been trying to work against that here and, and support local production in Montgomery County. And we've been very successful at opening the door to breweries in our urban areas. We've got now a number of breweries that have opened up in Silver Spring, for example, or Rockville. And, uh, and we've got some terrific businesses that have started in Brookville, in Laytonsville, in Poolsville, making beer and making wine. Uh, but we're also seeing that they are operating in a way that is um, you know, we, we think it is important and urgent to clarify the zoning code and really tighten that up and uh, establish what the rights are when you want to invest in a business like this and get it going. Because it's a huge, huge commitment to buy several hundred acres and to open a winery. And, you know, if you don't, if you're not confident that you're going to be able to make it through the zoning, uh, you know, the, the, the use process, then you're not going to make that investment. And so... Um, we are on the verge, I think, of um, really having a very successful beginning to the uh, winery industry in the county, um, but we do need to take some steps to modernize the zoning code. Uh, there are a lot of issues that we're going to be grappling with. I'm sure there will be some changes. I've proposed some additional changes from what the Fed Committee recommended. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to make sure we get it right. Uh, no question about that. Um, there's a lot of you know, a lot of issues floating around, but uh, overall, this is a tremendous opportunity for the next generation to come into farming. What you see with a lot of these breweries, for example, is uh, the children or grandchildren of farm operators, you know, finding that this is a path back for them to that, that community and to that lifestyle. And uh, they're some of the more innovative and creative business owners we have in the county. And they're making this county a better place to live. I, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think that you know, an afternoon at one of the county's wineries or breweries is one of the best experiences you can have in the farmland area of the county, in the Ag Reserve. And uh, it's one of the best weekend experiences that Montgomery County has to offer. And I think that that really reflects a, a, a good vision of the Ag Reserve. And I don't think we should look at that part of the county as sort of a residence of Montgomery County. You can drive by, but you know, you're, not really, you're not really welcome here. Um, and I think that has somewhat been an attitude through the past, and we really need to uh, kind of engage the community and, and bring it closer to home. So, uh, uh, again, the council will be taking that up tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, you know, other than that, the bike master plan, the T&E committee will be taking that up today. 
really appreciate the work of the planning board and the planning staff in devising a very visionary uh, plan for the county, looking really far down the road and helping us understand the kind of changes that we're going to have to make if we're going to succeed in changing from being a community that where you have to drive everywhere to do whatever you want to do to one where you can take public transportation or walk or bike. And it shouldn't be a surprise that a community that was really designed for the automobile, you know, that you have to make a lot of changes to be able to function for all types of transportation choices. But I think there's a real strong demand in the county for people to have options, to be able to live in a location where they could drive or they could walk or they could bike. And uh, so this plan is an important part of setting in place, you know, the land use development process and providing counsel to the capital budget. So there's a, there's a lot there that I think is, is uh, exciting. And again, I really want to compliment uh, Commissioner Casey Anderson, chair of the planning board. Uh, he's been a terrific bike advocate uh, in his role there. And I think there's a lot of enthusiasm about the changes that we're making uh, to make the county more bike friendly. And this is a big piece of that puzzle. Um, I think that's what I will have as my prepared uh, topics, so we'd welcome questions on any matter before the council or county at this time. Kylie. Could you talk about the moratorium on the enrollment on the summer students? Yeah. Well, um, you know, it's a certainly is a testament to the changing demographics, the the changing lifestyles, uh, the fact that our schools are, you know, desirable and people want to move in uh, to the communities where. You know, the schools are often bursting at the seams. Um, I think we really do need to resolve this. I don't think it's acceptable to have a housing moratorium that uh, lasts for an extended period of time. So uh, I'm, you know, we, we have a process to plan out changes in the capital budget for schools to resolve that problem when, when the problem comes up. And uh, it's a good planning tool that moratorium is a is a good tool to kind of give everyone a kick in the pants and say, you know, you've got an, a challenge in this area and you need to figure it out and get the capital budget aligned so that you're creating school capacity where you know you're going to need it. Um, so if that is the outcome of this, then I think it will be a beneficial. Um, but we do have some work to do uh, urgently to figure out where the school capacity and how the school ca capacity can be delivered. And uh, I know the superintendent's going to be making a new budget request uh, for the capital budget for the schools, and we'll take a look at how that aligns with uh, these concerns. But you know, there are there are some important projects that we we want both to move forward. You know, we we want the housing to be created, we want the commercial revitalization to happen. Uh, we've just got to figure out how to bring them together and resolve them with our school capacity needs. But um, you know, so. It's a uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's a you know never-ending challenge in Montgomery County. But uh, I I strongly believe we've got to resolve this so that we can move forward by expanding school capacity and continue to create the housing that people need in order to have an affordable life in Montgomery County. Uh, Mark Elrich talked about having a committee hearing for the people that committed suicide in county jails this summer. So is there any update on, if you know when that committee hearing is going to be? Um, I haven't heard a date. Um, yeah. Sorry. Any thoughts about the suicide happening this summer? Um, well, I think it would be very helpful to have a committee hearing. And we, you know, it's a, we, no one should die on our watch. And it is really unfortunate. You know, the inmates that have taken their lives, uh, you know, they're all alternatives, and we need to have closer monitoring of their well-being, and, and we need to be working with them to help them you know, confront the challenge that they're, they're faced with. So it's unfortunate, but I think a committee briefing will certainly uh, help bring some of those issues out. Um, on the, your bill with uh, the alcohol in the Ag Reserve and distilleries. Yeah. So if there's a distillery that opens up in the Ag Reserve after your bill passes, you know, years down the line, and someone goes on a tour of this distillery, are they able to purchase liquor from the distillery, or would they have to 
go to a county liquor store to buy liquor from the facility? That's a great question. Actually, I'm not totally sure I know the answer to that one. Um, it doesn't avoid any of the licensing requirements yeah. for liquor. It just deals with what you can do on the land. Okay. I think we might need some additional state legislation to uh, enable a distillery to sell its own product. We, we do have distillery, a distillery in Rockville that sells its own products. So we've created that exemption already, but it just doesn't apply. Right. So yes, I think the answer is yes. You would be able to buy spirits from that distillery, made by that distillery. Um, there have been a couple of groups that have opposed uh, alcohol production in the Ag Reserve. Um, how have they been brought in on these um, um, uh, the rewrite of the regulations, and um, um, what do you think of their concerns? Um, well. I would like to think that there is general agreement about establishing wineries and breweries. I'm not actually sure that that's true. There may not even really be a general agreement. We've worked very hard to understand the concerns that have been raised. Some of the restrictions that we've heard requested would uh, contradict the existing models that we see succeeding in the Ag Reserve today. So Brookville Beer Farm, for example, uh, you know, or where DACA. We've heard, we've heard uh, requests for restrictions that, you know, you know are, are inconsistent with what they are doing now. Uh, so to me, that's problematic. I think that if you look at either of those two breweries and, and think that there's something other than a success there, you know, uh, I don't, you know, that's not, that wouldn't be my perspective on it. So that said, I do think that there are important issues that are being raised about how do we ensure the tie between agriculture and the production of beer and wine and cider and spirits? And I think that's a challenge that we need to ensure that we are addressing very carefully. Um, I think there are very relevant issues about whether it's noise or um, you know, the number of people coming out. So we're, we're working hard and there are some recommended, recommended changes for the full council from the committee that kind of reduce the number of wedding type events or corporate retreat type events to ensure that we're really getting what we want, which is we want to open the door for people who want to, for example, really create a great winery. Uh, but we're not trying to open the door to somebody that wants to create a wedding event business with a, a kind of a side operation of making some small amount of wine, you know, to make the numbers work. So there is a distinction there, and we want to really hone in on how to ensure that we're getting uh, wineries with real integrity. Uh, and I will say the, the ones that we've seen, I think, are, are terrific examples. We've got Old Westminster Winery, you know, which purchased a very large farm in Clarksburg. Black Ankle Winery which purchased a lot of land in Clarksburg, more than 200 acres. So, um, you know, these are these are really great winemakers that are coming into the county. Um, and they, they, uh, they also see the distinction between wineries that have a lot of integrity about making wine and wineries that are just really event facilities. So uh, that's one of the reasons why one of the, in, in the recommendations for the full council, I've, I've changed some of the proposals around the number of events that you can have and the number of people uh, that can participate in those events. So. Um, you know, it's, it's a challenging issue. It's no question about it. It takes listening and responding to all kinds of viewpoints to get to the right answer. Um, what about, um, I believe it's Delegate Kramer is having a, um, a series of hearings about the, essentially the dangers of alcohol. Um, do you expect any greater um, flack from Annapolis in trying to pursue your goals? Um, well, I think Delegate Kramer, you know, regularly speaks to the public health issues. Um, at times, I think he's right on the money. I certainly disagree with him on some of the reform proposals that we've considered for our county. Um, but uh, I think he, I think he's doing the right thing by keeping in mind that alcohol is a it's a public health issue, and we want to encourage 
breweries and wineries and distilleries and cideries, but you know, there's there's a there's a balance there, and you, you have to constantly keep in mind the health impacts for people and for communities. So, um, I I think that I, I'm personally not anticipating any real negative change at the state level that would make it harder to start wineries. I think the state is also moving in the same direction that we're trying to move in, which is trying to empower uh, local producers, local makers of wine and, and beer and spirits and, uh, and cider. So the general trend line is how do we support local production? Um, so generally speaking, I would anticipate we'll get more help in a good way from Annapolis. You mentioned that there's a history of alcohol production in Montgomery County, and it was hurt by prohibition. Um, but when you look at places across the United States that have wineries like Virginia, New York State, California, or distilleries like Kentucky, and there's a big tourism industry around it, do you think Montgomery County and Maryland in general is late to this trend? Well, yeah. I mean, I think the reason why you don't see more wineries in the county is because the zoning code has been, uh, it has deterred entrepreneurs and investors from starting them. You know, the, the, the soil and the climate in the Piedmont of Montgomery County is not different from the Piedmont of Northern Virginia. It's the same mountain range, it's the same conditions where the mountains meet the soil. So the good rocky soil uh, you know, that it's actually bad soil, but it's good rocky soil that grape, grape uh, that winemakers like is present here. But we haven't had wineries because we haven't embraced the industry, you know, legally, politically, community, culturally. Uh, so part of what we're trying to do is uh, establish that Montgomery County wants wineries. And in fact, I would say the old Drew Baker from Old Westminster Winery is not presently planning to open a, like, a winery. He's just got grapes growing in the county, but his facility is in Westminster. Um, and I asked him, would, would he, is he planning to open up a place in Montgomery County where on his 100 plus acres where people can come and you know, have a tasting room? He said he's not sure. You know, he's not sure if the county wants this or not. So he's looking to this zoning change to see where we're at, and I think that's, you know, that's, uh, it's a big investment, you know, it's a big commitment to open up a facility like that, and you want to know that you have a, a clear path, and you generally have a supportive environment. Mm -hmm.